Greetings everyone, Name 060 here. This video will soon follow in an adaption of an essay that I wrote for a Level 2 Adult Counselling Concepts course that I passed earlier this year. The aim of this video is to give a clear but basic outline of what the profession of counselling involves and hopefully to clear up one or two misconceptions that may prevent those who suffer from depression or related mental health issues from seeking professional help. Feel free to mirror this video or send it to a friend or family member if you feel that they would benefit from counselling services. But before I continue with this video, I would, like to, I would like to make a disclaimer. I am not by any means, nor am I a, an expert, nor am I a professional counsellor. At the very most, I am a student who passed a one day a week course lasting 10 weeks about the basic concepts and foundations of counselling. Please make sure to refer to a doctor or professional when seeking medical advice. As I stated before, my intention with this video is to inform my audience of the basics of counselling so that those who may need it can make a more informed decision. Now without further ado, let's begin. The standard definition for counselling taken from a textbook is Counselling skills are interpersonal communication skills derived from the study of therapeutic change in human beings used in a manner consistent with the goals and values of the established ethics of the profession of the practitioner in question. In addition, the, use, the user of counselling skills will find that their own professional skills are enhanced by, their proce uh, by the process, written by Pete Sanders. Counselling is a profession whereby the counsellor uses a variety of methods and skills to help a, the client overcome their emotional issues by analysing their own thoughts and feelings and decisions to help them find their own solutions. When the counsellor first meets with the client, the counsellor will set a contract with the client outlining what will be happening over the weeks and, and other such details. Counsellors have a clear code of ethic, ethics which outlines how a client should be treated. Part of the contract is, uh, is having a statement of the limits and confidentiality. Information about what exactly has been said will not be released except in exceptional circumstances such as money laundering, drug trafficking or acts of terrorism. Every so often the counsellor will talk to his supervisor so to ensure that he or she is not making any drastic mistakes or errors in treating the client as well as, well as to overview what the counsellor has done with the client over the period of time since the last talk with the supervisor. Counselling shares many similarities with other helping professions such as psychiatry, social work or police work. For example, counselling has a code of ethics when dealing with clients as well as directing the clients into other professions although counsellors would only do so if part of the client's problems go beyond the boundaries of what the counsellor is able to do such as med recommending medication. Many professions use similar skills to counselling, such as listening skills when dealing with a client. Social workers and police may have a different code of ethics to counsellors and have different levels of confidentiality. Unlike the other two helping professions that have been mentioned, the counsellor is, is the listening ear for the client to explain her pro, um, his or her problems, while the counsellor does not get directly involved with helping the client as other pro, uh, helping professions may do. Counsellors do not give advice on what actions the client should or should not do, unlike social workers. <coughs> Counselling skills. Counsellors use a variety of different skills to uh, best help their client. What follows is uh, three examples of the kind of skills that counsellors um, use as a part of their profession. Skill one, use of silence. Silence is a very important when dealing with the client, especially when a person and personal sensor therapy, which will be explained later. Because it allows the client to explain their issues and feelings clearly while feeling that they are being taken seriously. Well, the count, uh, when the counsellor is silent, the client is, will be able to fully express themselves to get their thoughts and feelings off their chest, which often is the first step to helping them feel better. Skills, skill two, reflecting and paraphrasing. 
Every so often, the counsellor will need to reflect back on what the client has just said and make a verbal summary of the client's words. Putting what the client has just said in the counsellor's own words shows that the client, uh, uh, shows the client that the counsellor is listening to him or her and is much like holding up a mirror to the client to allow them to reflect on what has just been said. It is important to note that the counsellor may politely interrupt the client on occasion to reflect and paraphrase on what has been said if the counsellor feels that the client is saying too much at once to take in. Skill 3. Attending to nonverbal communication. It is important for the counsellor to be thoughtful of the client's body language as well as his or her tone of voice to ensure that not only the client feels that they are being listened to and being taken seriously but also to reflect on any contradictions that the client may have, been bet uh, have between the spoken words and their body language. Nonverbal communication also helps with building relationship between the client and the counsellor and can clearly outline the client's true feelings behind the words of what they say. It is important for the counsellor to watch their own body language and tone of voice as well to make sure that the they do not end up appearing as though they are contradicting themselves. Different types of counselling. There are three main different models of therapy that counsellors use to help the clients. Personal centred therapy. Person centred therapy, or PCT, is part of the humanist school of therapy and was largely developed by Carl Rogers in the 1950s. PCT uh, lets the client take lead ex in expressing and explaining the issues while the counsellor actively listens and occasionally will reflect back and paraphrase what the client has just said, as I explained before. PCT will make use of open questions and set, uh, sets tasks for the client to do in their own time to examine their feelings and find their own way forward. PCT uses the three core condition of genuineness, unconditional positive regard and empathy in its method, although these core conditions are shared by the other forms of uh, therapy as well. To be clear, an unconditional positive regard means that they will treat them in a positive manner and not damn them or any related negative attitudes regardless of what they may have done. This does not mean that if a client has broken the law they will not be reported to the police, but it means that their, issue, their personal issues will be put at front and hopefully best be understood so that the client may be helped. Transactional analysis. Before I continue with the segment, I want to um, plug the user Theremin Trees, I believe the username is called, because he has done a series of videos on transactional analysis, which perhaps gives a better description than this essay can. He has done a series of videos, including a video on YouTube, quote unquote, games, showing some tendencies and particular behaviour qualities of people on YouTube, including creationists. I highly recommend that you check out his channel and his series of videos if you are interested in the subject of uh, transactional analysis. Transactional analysis, or TA, is part of the psychoanalytic school of therapy and was developed by Eric Byrne in the 1950s. It is different from PCT in that it analyzes a person's behaviour and compares them with a psychological model to put the behaviour of a client in perspective. TA uses the model that suggests that all forms of behaviour fits into one of three different ego states. The parent ego state is where the person's behaviour may reflect how a parent treats a child, either being overly angry and authoritative, or potentially being overly concerned or caring for a person's well-being. The child ego state is, on, on the other hand, the opposite end of the scale where the person's behaviour reflects how a small child may react to different situations, either being fearful and cowering away from the situation, or being overly enthusiastic and wanting to join in with the situation. The adult ego state is a, between these two, where the person's behaviour responds most rationally in examining a situation to react appropriately. Over time, and depending on a situation, a person can switch between these ego states as the behaviour changes. The goal of TA is uh, to help put the client's behaviour into perspective and develop their adult ego state to avoid destructive self-defeating thinking.
I also re recommend the book Games People Play by Eric Byrne, which is a brilliant and very informative uh, book on the subject, which goes into brilliant detail in the kind of behavioural games that people will play one another in the form of TA. Rational Emotive Behaviour Therapy Rational Emotive Behaviour Therapy, or REBT, is part of the Cognitive Behavioural School of Therapy that was developed by Albert Ellis in the 1960s. It is different from both TA and PCT and it does not focus on a person's emotions. Instead, it focuses on the physical behaviour and actions of the person to examine what the cause of their emotional issues may be and what decisions lead them to feel the way, um, the way they do. REBT examines three points which leads the client to feel the way they do. The first point is actions as in what actions of the, or events have happened to start, uh, start off this train of thought. The second is beliefs, as in what the client believes about themselves as a result of their actions. The third point is consequences, as in what uh, are the outcomes of these beliefs are. The goal of REBT is to examine the beliefs of the client and replace destructive thinking with constructive thinking. Clients will be set tasks by the counsellor to examine these beliefs, which is why REBT is no, best known as an active directive therapy, unlike how TA is also much like how TA is also directed, but unlike PCT, which is non-directive. And that concludes my basic outlook on the profession of counselling. In closing, it is important to remember that we all have a scale of mental health just as we do our physical health. Maintaining a good mental health balance is just as, if not more important, than maintaining a good balance of physical health. Those who suggest seeking the help of professionals do not think you are crazy nor unhealthy. They are simply have the well-being of your mental health in mind and your best interest at heart. Thanks for watching.